How are you feeling about the Buffalo Bills in the AFC East? So what I'm thinking is, bro, for the Bills, I'm liking them right grading out at a B, right? We got Mitch Trubisky back in the building on a cheap deal. He showed he played well in Buffalo's offense. Adding Mac Hollins, Curtis Samuel to the receiving court. Again, nothing crazy, but good depth. Guys that have good hands. And I think Curtis Samuel is a sneaky addition to this offense. You can definitely use him in a few different ways, as we know. Uh, you know, getting some offensive line depth with, we, we get David Edwards. And then you had to resign the Deion Dawkins extension was crucial. Got that done. Love bringing up Nessa back. Daquan Jones, rock solid. Getting a linebacker depth with Nicholas Morrow. Cam Lewis, cornerback depth. And then Taylor Rapp coming in. At re-signing on that to for now be, again, the starting safety because and we know Jordan Poyer out the building. So if you're the Bills, you feel pretty happy about this. Again, could have maybe made a few more moves uh, to be competitive, more competitive in that crazy AFC. But, you, you know, the Bills are already a competitive team and they definitely made some good moves. So. so I like bringing back Mitch as well. I think he compares really well to the way Josh Allen plays. Um, and I don't necessarily mind letting Gabe Davis walk. I have not been super big on Gabe Davis. I think Curtis Samuel can definitely play that role. Obviously re-signing uh, Deion Dawkins, um, AJ Epinenza, like you said, kind of solidifying that line. Um, and, you know, obviously losing Trey White and Boyer is big, are big losses, right? And they're going to have to figure that out. But re-signing Taylor Rapp just to kind of solidify that secondary of known faces around the facility is a good thing. Morrow has made his way around the league, but he's not a horrible linebacker. He's someone that can play for you. Um, so we came to a judgment that the Buffalo Bills came out at a B minus for their offseason so far. I still think there's some moves to be made. Obviously, we saw the purge happen where they cut all these guys to get under the cap floor. And, you know, typical Stefan Diggs causing drama on Twitter today. We don't know what's going to happen with him. So, Dobbs, it's literally you egregious, bro. <laughs> it's literally to the point, like, I'm so tired of it. I'm not a Bills fan, bro. Like, Bills fans, can y'all sound off in the comments, please? If you had to guess, do you think Stefan Diggs is back in Buffalo next year? Or do you think he's traded? Bro, like I said before this, if that tweet was, if, if we're not all just misjudging, he's not tweeting lyrics or something, bro, I kid you not, if I was making the decisions, I would not be dealing with it anymore. I'm just going to leave it at that. Like, it's literally to the point where it's like, you you actually are causing more trouble than it's worth type shit. You know what I mean? It's like. I think the thing with the NFL is it works a little bit slower than other leagues like the NBA, where it's like, okay, you hear trade rumors one year, it'll come and die pretty quick. You hear trade rumors the next year, it's like, oh, okay, maybe it's going to happen. I feel like it's been enough time where we hear, heard these trade rumors where something could probably actually happen this year. And it would probably be before the season or at the trade deadline. No, for sure. And I'm sure if you're Josh Allen and the Bills, you've got to be saying to yourself, like, how many times are we going to deal with the same problem before we diagnose ourselves as insane? The definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. I mean, I don't know if you expect to find a change. Maybe you're the one that's crazy. Okay, B minus for the Buffalo Bills. Now we have the Miami Dolphins, who we gave a grade of a B to. So, Dobbs, let me know why you felt this was a strong B for the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, no, and I think, and again, you'd agree with this as well. From more, more than anything, the Dolphins added a lot of pieces that are just going to help bolster this team, right? Like guys like a Shaq Barrett, a Jordan Brooks, a Jordan Poyer. Great. Those are great. You're getting great starting signings. And then you got also, we got great depth here. Well, also, how can I forget John Smith starting, you probably new starting tight end. Kendall Fuller. Right? Yeah, like there's, there, you got yourself a lot of guys here. And then besides that, like you're saying, a lot of just good depth, right? Robert Jones, Aaron Brewer, Neville Gallimore, Jonathan Harris. I could, there's, I mean, there's more. I mean, I could, Nick Needham, like you're getting on that resign. You got a lot of good depth in this class. And, uh, and also re-signing uh, Jake Pun or Jake Bailey, the punter. Like, that's also a W for the uh I know. The, uh, I know Miami Dolphins. Dolphins fans were upset about Bailey. Interesting. They, I they don't like him. Yeah. Interesting. I don't think he's What if good, I'm not but... mistaken, I think his average last year was actually pretty high. But, how? I, I, you know, maybe I got to crunch more Miami Dolphins yeah. special teams more tape. More special guys, teams tape. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I really, really like the Johnny Smith signing, honestly. Um, and I think Aaron Brewer, to kind of fill in, for Connor Williams because of that ACL tear is going to be big for them. Kind of solidify that interior. My favorite move is probably the Shaq Barrett move. I really, really like Shaq Barrett. I think he can be a good 
pass rusher for the Miami Dolphins. So we are finishing out with a grade of a B for them. Moving on to the New England Patriots. Um, we gave them a C plus. I think bringing back Jacoby Brissett was definitely a big deal for them. Uh, if they draft a rookie and they don't feel like he's ready, they can definitely play Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett is not a scrub. He can start for you and be that guy. I don't necessarily care for the Antonio Gibson signing. I don't think it's egregious. I think it's an okay signing. I don't, I'm not a big fan of Antonio Gibson. Uh, Kendrick Bourne, I would have rather paid Curtis Samuel the same amount of money if Samuel was open to it or maybe even a little bit more. They struck out with the Ridley deal. Um, apparently they're offering him 20 mil instead of the 23 that the Titans offered. And I don't really like the three year, $27 million extension or re-sign for Hunter Henry. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Um, my favorite move was kind of the, um, you know, the friend team friendly deal of Josh Uche and then Mike Owenahu. um, that re-sign, you know, you solidify a tackle spot. So overall, not horrible i don't necessarily love their moves though yeah and no, i'll say i also i also to add one of the to, to like the signings that i like i also do like the i'm fernie jennings signing but like minus that oh and kyle duggar also with that transition tag but minus that yeah we're also we're thinking the same thing bro like you're, you're looking at the patriots and you're kind of hitting that what's the direction question and again like you're saying the direction is probably just sitting the rookie behind I, likely, I envision the scenario being Jacoby Brissett's going to be the bridge for whoever they draft. But regardless, this team is still so heavily lacking in so many areas. And I don't know. Like, they, they spent a fair amount of money. I, I just, it, the Patriots, you just have to ask yourself, like, what's the direction? Yeah. I, I think also, like, with the higher up, it is just uh, kind of weird. Like, you don't, you don't really know. Like, are you trying to win one while Kraft is still there? Are, like, is that the motivation? Are they trying to compete a little bit earlier than they probably should? I don't necessarily love that their GM structure. I don't necessarily think Jared Mayo was the best head coach hire for them. Um, I think when Bill left, the Patriot way, what it was, should have kind of went with him. I think they should have gone for a total rebrand. No, that's, that's an interesting point too, bro. It's going to be very interesting to see how this... Patriots, you know, trying to stay kind of in that same mold with the whole, you know, whole new structure in the building. It's going to be very interesting to see how this unfolds. C plus for the New England Patriots. Now we have the New York Jets, the last team in the AFC East, and we have them with a B. Um, I think the reason we had them with a B, or at least my reasoning is Tyra Taylor is a drastic step up from whoever they had backing up last year. I don't, they should have called Joe Flacco. That was a horrible mistake. Um, the pit, the, they've basically kind of recrafted their line. The trade for Morgan Moses, I think was good signing. John Simpson, I think was good. Javon Kinlaw was good. Um, Greg Sirline's a good kicker. So they didn't do a ton, but enough to warrant a B where that O line doesn't really scare me enough where they really just kind of need the left tackle. Cause they have, you know, they have Simpson at guard. They have AVT at guard. They have Tipman at center. And then they have, uh, Moses at right tackle. So Olu Fashanu coming at pick 10. That's what, that's why I'm saying, bro. If I, I, I know in a lot of my recent mocks, I'm saying that I, I can see very much the jets going Olu because you want that pass protecting ceiling is super high. You know, you're getting with that with Olu Olu. He just might be a jet the way things are trending. I think they just need that left tackle. Any other thoughts on the jets before we move into the NFC East? No, you you completely recited everything I was going to say. Like, just they, they they hit on the trenches they needed to hit on. All right, moving into the NFC East. 